All right, guys, this is my second attempt to record this video as I got a phone call the first time. So it's a new reminder that I need to put my phone in airplane mode as I record. Um, it's another Marvel classic review with John De La Rose, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. I mentioned last time I'm going to be doing mostly epic collections. Um, that's true. Uh, but this time I am doing uh, Spider-Man by Roger Stern Omnibus. As you see, it's ginormous. It's about 1,300 pages long. It's all Roger Stern's writing. Roger Stern wrote uh, from like 80 to 85, somewhere in there. Um, I can't, can't remember the exact dates. Some of the best Spider-Man stuff of all time. And this is not reprinted in any Epic Collections. The Epic Collections right now, um, the, the latest, the earliest one that's going is uh, Volume 7, which is around the time uh, Gwen Stacy falls off the bridge. And then uh, the next one, Volume 15, actually picks up uh, from, I believe, the first issue uh, at the end of this, which is the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 262. So Stern did Amazing Spider-Man from 224 to that 262 mark. And he also did uh, a run on Spectacular Spider-Man before that, in which he got promoted. Um, he is best known for his work on The Hobgoblin. Um, the Hobgoblin is his creation. And throughout the Amazing Spider-Man run, uh, he starts hyping this Hobgoblin villain, who we don't know who he is, but he's very dangerous. And, uh, and then he kind of brings that to a conclusion where the Hobgoblin seemingly dies at the very end of it. Spoiler alert. And um, this apparently was like a big controversial storyline back in the 80s, which uh, people really loved. And um, it's one of the more beloved uh, runs of Spider-Man because of that. So um, I was excited, um, not only because of, of, of Spider-Man, which I, I've read a couple issues here and there from the main one, um, but, but also from Spectacular. Spectacular, I, I hadn't read these this series before. And um, I know that Spectacular was like the writing assignment nobody wanted. It was like the, like, oh, it's the second fiddle to the main one. And so uh, they, they had trouble getting people doing it. And Roger Stern kind of just got promoted uh, from being an assistant or something like that into doing this. And then he got, that everybody loved his run. So he got promoted again onto the main one. And he actually gives a big detailed history of, uh, of how this all uh, happened in a, in a like six page deal right here, which is fun. Um, now, Spider-Man in, in this is a graduate student, and he's working in a graduate student like physics lab uh, with a couple cap cast of background characters um, who kind of disappear a little more as amazing goes in. Um, in Spectacular, uh, the main one to note is Deborah Whitman, who uh, Peter Parker is, um, is dating a little bit at the time. She gets very frustrated with everything that he's doing. Uh, as he runs off all the time and, and is never reliable. Now, uh, I don't know if this is a, a, a villain that Roger made up. She's called Belladonna. She looks like Carmen Sandiego with a mask or something like that. And this whole storyline in Spectacular runs through that there's like these people going around killing like fashion designers in New York and things like that. And and uh, and it, it's a common thread that goes through as well. I don't, I don't remember why they uh, got into the physics lab. I actually read this over the course of a uh, last couple of years. And, um, and not like a couple years, one year, um, I'd read like an issue here or there um, and, and go through it. Um, Roger Stern also liked to use the Vulture a lot. Vulture appears a ton in Roger Stern's books here, I've noticed. Very interesting. Um, Peter is, um, you know, in his mid 20s, I guess, and, uh, and responsible trying to be an adult. I, I notice he's got, he's always got this like little goofy, uh, hair thing going on right here to, to identify him as Peter. Um, and um, uh, I guess his classmates are practical jokers. Mary Jane's gone is one thing to notice. Uh, he, apparently, like in the run before this, she was going to um, marry him, or Peter wanted her to marry him, and uh, she um, bailed on that. Um, and then, yeah, that's what we have going on here. Very fun stuff and spectacular. Um, I, I can see why he's promoted. They are kind of one-off stories, except for that Belladonna storyline for the most part, um, as I think the main character development kind of happens in Amazing Spider-Man also. Um, and so that goes on for a while. We get some different villains, get some different people. Here we go. We're still in Spectacular. Still in Spectacular. 
Uh, where does amazing start? It starts pretty shortly here. Ah, still not there. The Moonstone is a harsh mistress. A nice little call out to Heinlein there. Uh, more Vulture, as I mentioned. So Vulture appears again in the first issue of Amazing Spider-Man here that he writes. And um, he's, uh, I guess, Aunt May is at like some old folks gathering or whatever. And she actually invites, the, you know, Adrian to show up or something. And he then messes with uh, her squeeze at the time, Nathan, who's, who's throughout this series. Messes things up. This is a funny uh, villain here. He's called the Fool Killer. And the Fool Killer goes around killing fools. And eventually uh, Spider-Man, uh, you know, makes him realize that it's foolish to go around killing fools. And so he uh, has an existential crisis there. A black cat is very prominent in, in these issues, not so much in the spectacular run before this, um, but apparently she'd been gone for several issues. And uh, she, came, she comes back here and obviously, you know, they, they rekindle their relationship as she's got this weird crush on Spider-Man, doesn't want to actually know who he is under his identity. Um, and they get together. Eventually the black cat gets injured um, and, uh, and then Peter's like visiting her in the hospital quite a bit. Um, which is good. Uh, art's really good. Who's doing the art on this stuff in this issue, in these issues? I know John Romita Jr. ends up doing the vast bulk of his run. Um, I can't tell if that's Romita Jr. from this. Uh, it is. Okay. Um, and Jim Mooney, I guess they, uh, they kind of short, short, yeah, shared those duties. Um, but, uh, yeah, John Romita Jr. has not developed his, like, signature, like, boxy style yet. I mean, you can see it a little bit, maybe. He's definitely got the more classic style here. This is uh, one of the most uh, well-renowned storylines of all time. It's two issues. Nothing can stop the Juggernaut. Madame Webb shows up, and 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 uh, some villains are trying to get them, and they send the Juggernaut after her. And Spider-Man just like does everything he can to stop the Juggernaut, but he can't stop the Juggernaut. Oh my gosh, how scandalous! Um, and then uh, here's the the second issue. Beautiful, beautiful cover right there. Uh, wonderful, wonderful storyline. Spider-Man obviously wins. Um, there's a Will of the Wisp storyline in here too, which uh, which uh, goes over some like uh, lab accidents. Uh, I don't know where that is. Oh, we got Mr. Hyde and Cobra working together. Some classic '60s villain uh, villains coming back. The Tarantula. I think this is the Will of the Wisp uh, where it kind of starts. Um, and uh, the Will of the Wisp. Yeah, here it is. Very, this is a very good storyline uh, too. And he goes over and is upset with some people for turning him into what he is. And uh, and Peter's trying to figure out what's going on. There's this bad lab accident that's going on. The tarantula becomes like a real tarantula uh, because of these strange lab accidents and then they end up having to fight him. Good stuff. Love the John Romita Jr. It's just like, he looks so sinister, it's so cool. Um, and of course, oh man, look at that. That is, that is sweet. Um, so we get some more tarantula stuff as the tarantula has been manipulated into being this monster, finally. Good stuff. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, he, like, then we get to the Hobgoblin storyline. So the rest of this uh, really builds upon the Hobgoblin storyline. There's like a kingpin thread that's, that's building in here also. And uh, the Hobgoblin's striping everywhere. Peter's really trying to find him. Um, there is a uh, there's a, a secondary plot line um, where Peter is uh, you know has a new rival for his photography also a guy named Lance Bannon and this is Lance Bannon's girl um, and she's trying to flirt with Peter to get back at him because he's not attentive enough of her and Peter's just like go away uh, unrealistic obviously um, and that happens. Aunt May is doing her thing with Nathan always in this. More vulture action. Like I said, he liked to use the vulture quite a bit. Uh, and then here's the Lance Bannon bit where she actually, she actually pulls Peter in and kisses him. Awkward. And guess who shows up again? So I think I mentioned earlier in the video that Mary Jane's out of the picture for most of this run. We're on page 964 uh, at this point. Um, and she had left because he proposed to her and didn't, uh, didn't she didn't want to. Well, guess who's back just to share in this little kiss? Oh, bad timing, Mary Jane. Um, and yeah, wonderful stuff. I love the personal development that used to happen in comics like this. This is what I try to do in my own books. Um, create some, some cool personal development situations that don't exist anymore. 
uh, because they're not allowed to develop characters anymore. And then there's her and Lance uh, kind of getting back together after she realizes she made a mistake. Um, there's some black cat stuff. This is a, a fake unmasking um, because the, the hobgoblin actually set up somebody and put him in a hobgoblin mask uh, to be unmasked and, and try to throw people off the scent. It really builds up these next few issues over here um, as, uh, as this all goes down. And it ends with a big hobgoblin finale, which is awesome. Look at, the, look at this action right here. And that is just like excellent action. You don't even need, look, you don't even need anything. You just need some lines and it shows the explosion very well. Um, very good stuff by John Romita Jr. Look at that facial expression, awesome. Um, and here it is, this is the end of the Hobgoblin storyline, at least Roger Stern's version of it. Um, and uh, that ends uh, with the Hobgoblin seemingly blowing up. We've got one more issue after this. Uh, Roger Stern actually didn't write that last issue, he plotted it and Tom DeFalco started taking it over. And here it is, uh, Tom DeFalco is fully taken over. Tom DeFalco is probably my favorite writer and this is where he comes in with, uh, with 252. Um, and this is where the next epic collection actually begins uh, with the Spider-Man stuff too. So, um, so if you wanna read early uh, Spider-Man stuff, you, you, got, you can read X one through four and then you got to kind of read uh, Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 4 Omnibuses. And then uh, there's a big gap after that. Um, there, there is an Epic Collection 7, which is in, in, included in, in Omnibus 4. A uh, big gap after that from like issue 149 to 224 here. Um, and those are mostly printed in the Marvel Masterworks, um, but you know, those get expensive, so that's kind of hard to do. Um, and then and then this is where the epics really kick off because they've got 15, still missing 16, but then they've got 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 in print, which makes it easy to read a whole big run through. Um, Tom DeFalco is my favorite writer, and so it's fun. This is where the alien costume thing starts, um, so you get to see a lot of that action coming up. Um, and this is the end of Roger Stern. He's gone, and, uh, and that's it. Um, and your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man comes out. So uh, what happens in Peter's life is that Deborah Whitman girl who he's seeing at the beginning of Spectacular kind of goes away because she can't even handle all this stuff. Um, and uh, this black cat thing ramps up. Mary Jane's back um, and uh, Mary Jane's relationship really kicks off very shortly here. Um, uh, not, not, not a ton in these issues, but right after is where they, they really dial in the Mary Jane relationship, which is my favorite part of Spider-Man. So I'm very happy about that. Um, Let's see, what else is going on in Peter's life? Still working as a photographer. He, the, the notable thing here is he actually gives up on his uh, graduate program uh, at this point and, and says he's gonna take a step back and kind of reevaluate re his whole life. Um, and so he, he bails out of his get graduate sort of, uh, program kind of toward the end of this run and uh, refocuses on being a photographer and things like that. I don't know if that's a, a move to youth, you know, make him more young and less nerdy, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but that, that's, uh, that was his life developments there. Um, the Hobgoblin's obviously very cool. Um, and, um, I think that's all I got to say about this. This is some of the best Spider-Man stuff, uh, you can possibly read. Ooh. Definitely doesn't like to close that way. Um, and, um, yeah, highly recommend. I mean, if you can find this, because I think it's out of print. But uh, this is good stuff. This is the best of Spider-Man, and that's what you got for today. See ya.